What is up guys? Sarah Winstead here, coach with Pro Physique and Bikini Athlete. We are back with another video. Um, this one was actually requested off of my Instagram channel. You guys really wanted to know more about like the entire process and what I call the seasons of bodybuilding. And this is really important for first time competitors, current competitors, and these seasons also can apply to lifestyle clients, whether it's kind of your first dieting phase, your first time working with a coach, or you just want to kind of get started and figure out where you are in this process, where you want to be, and how you're going to see results and crush your goals. So don't forget, follow me on Instagram. If you have more questions like this, I like doing kind of Q&A videos, putting out content that you guys enjoy. Um, but we'll go ahead and just dive right in here. I'm going to go through each of these phases and kind of explain to you the purpose, the goals, and kind of how long each of them could last and kind of where you see yourself in each of these phases. So we'll start off with the maintenance and building phase. Now, a lot of clients do come to me when they are in what I like to call improvement season. That is a season when we're not competing, as a season when we're not dieting. So rule of thumb here is that you just spend the majority of your time in this season. And I'll go over more timing here in a second. But this is what I like to call improvement season. So for competitors, if you have competed before, essentially, what was your feedback? Was it to build muscle mass? Where? You know, looking at your physique, looking at your stage photos, looking at kind of where you can make improvements based upon the judge's feedback is essentially the entire purpose of going into the maintenance phase and building phase for competitors. Obviously, there's other benefits as well, just from a life standpoint too. Building muscle mass. That is essentially the goals of maintenance and a building season, being in a maintenance calorie range that is suitable for you to either recomp your body or slowly build muscle mass or in a slight surplus. It doesn't have to be a huge, crazy, like dirty bulk of the past. It can be 100, 150, 200 calories. This is where having a coach in your improvement season can be very, very helpful because they can help you determine what your maintenance calorie range is, as well as what would be suitable for you in terms of, you know, rate of gain throughout this entire time. This is where progress photos come in hugely into play as well. Um, and it can all be very helpful as data points in your maintenance and building phase. Now, developing habits. This is critical, especially for people that are maybe newer to competing, first time competitors, um, as well as lifestyle clients. You don't really develop habits when you're dieting or when you're reverse dieting. You develop the habits when you're being consistent and adhere it to your, to your protocols and everything like that during improvement season. It's where you get really good at maybe coming up with your go-to meals, really good at kind of tracking your food, logging your food, weighing everything out, getting good at kind of knowing and how to build your plate, what foods work for you, um, you know, embracing a flexible dieting approach as well. This is where all of those habits come into play and we lay them down brick by brick. We don't attack 15 habits at one time in one week. No, we look at, hey, you know, are we tracking our food? Okay, let's get that in order in a maintenance phase in a calorie range that works for us to see how our body responds. So um, uh, improving your relationship with food. If you've competed before or if you've dieted before, you know at a certain point in contest prep, in your dieting phase, that food focus will become an issue. You will be thinking about food a little bit more frequently when you're dieting because obviously hunger and things like that come into play as well. But this is where you can make some really good gains, I'll say mental gains, especially your relationship with food. Incorporating foods that you may not have allowed yourself to have or that may not have been in your plan for contest prep and things like that. And this is again where you can actually improve the quality of your food, improve the nutrient timing of your food, incorporate new foods, satisfy some cravings with some fun foods because we all need to do that as well, and just really improve your mindset and get away from the rigid of contest prep, of fat loss phases and things like that as well. I'm not saying you can't be, you know, very much consistent in your improvement season, but it's a great place to work on those habits and work on your mindset, especially around food and not fearing food, food groups or certain foods like that. Strength goals. 
I love setting PR goals for improvement season, especially for my competitors and working our way up to that based upon their judges feedback, based upon where we see we need to improve as well. It's always good having a goal. Sometimes with this season being so long, we can get lost in, oh, what am I working towards? What am I doing? And everything that lost the monotony and feel like we're not making progress. Setting some strength goals, setting some PR goals in the gym and you know, utilizing that, beating your logbook week after week after week, improving improving your range of motion, improving your lifts. Um, there's a lot of ways to progressively overload your training in that kind of a phase as well. But having that some kind of goal to shoot for, especially for competitors, is a great thing to do for improvement season. Life goals. This is a great time as well because contest prep, because dieting, it can you can be so focused on that, which is what you need to do for contest prep because it's a really serious thing. You gotta be on point with that. This is a great time to embrace maybe other things in life. Um, for me, that meant, hey, I'm going to be moving. I'm going to make improvements in my career. I'm gonna be taking a little bit more vacation time, Still tracking, still logging, still doing things that I need to get done, but I'm also not entirely focused, entirely like entire days dedicated to this because you simply have more time in your hands. During contest prep, during fat loss phases, cardio becomes very, very high at certain points. And so you simply have more time. You're not gonna be posing for 30 minutes every single day and you know when you're in your improvement season. I still recommend posing in your improvement season and refining your routines and getting used to it, creating that muscle memory, but you're not gonna be, again, that schedule is not as rigid. So you can focus on other areas of your life during improvement season. At least six months. Um, I, I use this as a general rule of thumb. Again, this does not apply to everybody. It depends. It can be much, much longer, especially if you have a lot of improvements to make or a lot of muscle to build. It takes a whole lot more time to build muscle than it does to lose body fat. That's why I say spend the majority of your time in this maintenance building season of improving your physique. Because if your goal as a competitor is to come back better, then we need to spend time making those improvements. And I say at least six months. If you are having some like one or two body parts to refine and your feedback was, hey, we just need to add a little bit more here or a little bit more there, that you be competitive and you did really well in your season, like you were, you know, national call outs and everything like that, or won your division or won your overalls and things like that, then you can take maybe a little bit shorter of time, but you still have to take time off for the improvements in your overall metabolic capacity, just for life, mentally, physically, everything like that as well. But I say at least six. I prefer longer than that. Personally, for me, I've taken two years. Um, it'll be two years in August for me stepping away from stage because my feedback was that I needed more muscle everywhere, upper body, lower body, and much more. That was my feedback from Sandy. And so we've taken the time to do that because again, I have certain body parts that are slower to grow. If you watch my last video, you know that my upper body tends to grow a little bit faster than my lower body does. And so I knew that I need to take a lot of time to spend not in prep, not dieting, put on some muscle mass, because I really want to blow my physique out of the water. Now, if you take shorter time off, I wouldn't have the expectation that you're going to come back drastically different or drastically improving your physique. You don't have to compete year after year after year after year. I would honestly, if this is going to be a lifetime sport for you, I'd recommend taking eight, nine, 10, 12 months more off because again, that allows you to focus on all of these things and make certain that the next time you step on stage that you're proud of it, you're happy with it, and it's a stark difference in an improvement of your physique you know, from the last time you were on stage. All right, shifting gears into contest prep. Oh, sorry, last thing I'll mention about improvement season, it's a great time to hire a coach. Hiring a coach during improvement season because they get to know your body, they get to know you as a person, as a client, and there's no like, oh gosh, we have to like, you know, get on stage soon and we gotta push and we gotta do this and gotta do that. No, I honestly rather have coach have uh, clients sign up with me during improvement season because again, it gives us the time to do that, it gives us the time to develop the habits, make sure you're in the right place from a calorie standpoint, from a mental standpoint, physical standpoint. It allows us to set some good goals for your improvement season and really make a roadmap towards getting you on stage instead of being in a rush. Too often I find that clients are in a rush and they're just like, no, I have to do this, have to do that. I'm just like, well, let's take some more time. Let's really put the, you know, the work in. This is where the magic happens in improvement season. 
It does not happen while you're dieting. The magic happens here. You're revealing the muscle mass during contest prep. You're revealing your hard work that you've put in in the maintenance and building phases during contest prep. So that's a good lead in to contest prep as well. That is the number one goal. Revealing the muscle mass, obviously stepping on stage is the kind of other goal, but stripping away the level, the layers of body fat, seeing the muscle underneath, seeing your uh, physique, working on your posing because posing obviously is important during improvement season. You should be posing before you start contest prep. You should be refining your routine in contest prep, um, dedicating a lot of time to that because you could have the best physique in the world. But if you don't know how to show it off, how to actually hit your poses, whether it be figure, wellness, bikini, or the guys, um, it, it's just not gonna make a bit of difference with you. You could have the best physique, but if you can't show it off, you're not gonna place well. So. Posing, posing, posing. I have a posing coach because I'm a Bambi out there and I need to refine that and I've worked on that a little bit more also during my improvement season. Yes, it can be a little bit uncomfortable to work on your posing during improvement season, but you need to put in the work. Just like you put in the reps in the gym, you've gotta put the reps in with your posing. All right, progress. I like setting a good progress with a uh, rate for clients is about uh, 0.5 to 1% of your body weight lost per week. That's not one to two pounds. That could be a half pound, depending upon your size, your body weight, your stature, your physique overall. Um, that's just a general you know, idea that I like to set for clients just to see and make sure we're making progress towards our goals because slow and steady wins the race. If we're losing body fat and losing weight at a slower rate, that helps us guarantee that most of that is body fat. If you go too quickly, if you're on like the maybe two to 3% body weight per week, then I'd recommend looking at your protocols, perhaps slowing down because eventually your body is gonna start eating not just body fat, it's gonna start eating your lean muscle mass. We don't want that, especially for competitors. Measurements, very, very, very important. That waistline is a great indicator, hey, we're losing body fat. Even if that scale may not be going down each and every week, if we're looking tighter in our progress photos as well as looking tighter as far as the measurements go for that waistline, mm, then we're doing a great job. Then we're seeing changes and everything. Because again, that scale may not go down every single week, but that's why progress photos are important and that's why measurements are important because they're not gonna weigh you on stage. You know, the stage weight is arbitrary and it is unique to you as a competitor and as a person. And that's a conversation you need to have with your coach, maybe about, hey, where do you see us landing? What range do you see us landing based upon what you're seeing here? Personally, for me, I like getting about 10 pounds off of my competitors because that will give us an even better idea about, hey, where are we? Where do we need to be? And things like that as well. I mentioned progress photos. Progress photos, posing. Very, very, very important. Each and every week, seeing the changes, saying them to your coach, even if you have not the best week, please still check in with your coach. Do not miss check-ins and contest prep. Take your progress photos. It's great to hold you accountable because they need to see it. They need to evaluate it. They have a good coach's eye because a lot of times we may not think we're progressing as competitors, but we actually are. This is why having a coach is so, so important. It's why I have a coach because we can get those blinders on and be like, oh, it's not going down. It's not doing this. I'm like, but you look tighter. You'll look better. And they can also evaluate biofeedback. How is your sleep, your hunger, your energy, digestion, stress? All those things become amplified during contest prep and that need to be taken care of and managed during that time frame. Prep mindset. This is huge. This is huge because do not complain in prep. I will say that. Prep is a, you know, it's something we get to do. It's an addendum onto our day. You know, we are choosing to put ourselves through this. So having a positive mindset, I'm not saying they're not gonna have hard days. We all have hard days in prep. We're just like, oh my gosh, why am I doing this? I'm putting my body through hell and it's all to get up there on stage for 15 seconds. And I'm like, no, this is where your mindset comes into play. This is where, you know, diving down deeper and evaluating what is your why? Why are you doing this? Because it needs to be more than just for a plastic trophy. You know, for me, my why is I have to challenge myself. I have this innate fire to continue to challenge myself, to be better, to improve, to grow. And it comes back to my time as a college athlete and the need to always improve and push myself and challenge myself to see what I can actually do. Because I don't want to settle for just like, mm, okay, I'm just him hauling through life. No, that's part of my mindset in prep. And so when things get hard, I always reach back to my why, why I'm doing this, challenging myself, pushing myself to the limits. And then that just kind of relights my fire a little bit too. Um, 
and just kind of helps during contest prep because not every day is going to be the best day. Range of shows. This is also what I like for competitors, first timers or current competitors. If you have the opportunity to, if you live in an area where there may be more shows, places like Texas and Florida have a crap ton of shows. Um, but if you live in an area where you may have a, a bigger variety of shows, variety of even federations as well, it may you know be very helpful to look at not just a date, but a range. That way you're not so stuck on, oh, I got to be ready in eight weeks. I got to be ready in eight weeks. That can be very stressful. And we don't want a lot of stress in preps. Prep is already stressful enough. I'd rather not put a deadline on it until we get closer to, and this can be a conversation between you and your coach about, hey, where do I live? Where would I want to travel? What works for me in my schedule? Can we look at a few dates? Because I always like to have a backup show in mind too, just in case we're not ready. Just in case things come up, things happen, injuries happen, you know, family things happen, career things happen, you know, no prep is going to be perfect. That's why I like having a range of shows in mind. Train hard. A lot of times they say, oh, I'm going to switch to volume training, or I'm going to switch to light weights, a lot of reps during prep. Nope. It's a great way to lose your muscle mass. Continue to train hard. Continue to train as hard as you did in improvement season, as hard as you can during contest prep. Because the harder you train, the more your body is likely to hang on to the muscle mass that you've worked so incredibly hard for. So there are gonna be a lot of days where you don't wanna get up and don't wanna train. Obviously listen to your body, make sure you're recovering, make sure you're resting and not getting injured and taking all the precautions necessary. Um, but continue to train and challenge yourself in the gym. Hunger and discipline. Hunger is a reality during contest prep. You're gonna be hungry. You're gonna be hungry and sometimes you're gonna wake up in the middle of the night and you're gonna be like, oh gosh, I am super, super, super hungry. Drink some water, go back to bed. <laughs> but at a certain point, yes, hunger is gonna be an issue, but make sure if hunger is like so, so much throughout the day and it's only like week two of contest prep, Look at your meals, evaluate your meal timing, evaluate where is your protein, where are your carbs, where are your fats, maybe rejigger those, talk to your coach, get some advice from them about how to manage it. You know, hunger, yes, is a reality, but it can be managed throughout the day. And I personally like it. I look at it as just like, yes. You know, it's like, okay, you know, we're keep pushing, we're keep going. Maybe I'm gonna look better tomorrow. You know, maybe I'm gonna look awesome in my posing, you know, practice tomorrow and things like that as well. Discipline. This kind of goes along line with relationships as well, um, of managing those during contest prep. You know, we need to have discipline. You've got to be on your numbers every single week. I'm not saying you're not going to mess up because mess ups are going to happen. You're going to screw up. Talk to your coach when that happens. Do not hide it from them because if I see a check-in where your weight is up or your waistline is up or you don't look, you look watery and you're just not telling me that, hey, I had a time where I went downstairs and I was suddenly fist deep in peanut butter. I need to know that that happened. That's important information because that is managing mindset, that is managing discipline, but it's also saying, hey, maybe we need to look at, again, what we what are we doing well? What are we not doing well? Do we need to push? Do we need to buckle down? Or do we need to pull back things back a little bit? Again, it's still a conversation I want you to have with your coach. Relationships. Talk to people around you. Contest prep, we can feel like an alien sometimes and being alone, especially if you don't live in an area where there's a lot of bodybuilders or a lot of competitions going around or go to a gym with a lot of those kinds of people. Um, talk to your people. Talk to your spouse. Talk to your significant other. Talk to your family. Talk to your kids. You know, Let them know about your goals in a way that is positive. Again, don't complain. Don't be like, hey, I'm going to be going through this, so I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't do that. No, put it in a way that makes it more of a positive, that makes it more of a fun thing. Be like, look, I have these lofty goals. It's going to be hard at some points, but here's kind of my overall timing. Here's what I'm thinking. Here's what my coach is saying as well. And put it to them, be like, yeah, I still want to be social. I still want to be with you at holidays and birthdays and things like that. But at a certain point, my food just may look a little bit different. I may be bringing my own food, but if you don't make a big deal out of it, they're not going to make a big deal out of that. And honestly, if they see you going through this, you may inspire them to maybe get their own shit together down the road too. You never know um, who you're inspiring by what you're doing. But as long as you have a positive spin on it and being like, this is for my improvement, tell them about your why, give them a heads up. You know, I always would text my husband if I was like super, super depleted and just not having a good mental image day. I would text him that when I was at the gym, be like, look, today is not the greatest day. Can you just give me a hug when I get home? 
And that was great. Communicate with them. Tell them how you're feeling. Don't just like hide it, go hide in your room and kind of just hide yourself away for, you know, 20 plus weeks. No, make the imp- make the changes, communicate with your family members and friends and let them know that this is not forever either. You know, there's going to be a time where you reverse, where you maintain, where yes, you can be more flexible with food. But again, I feel like we're still in a food centered society. And so just don't make a big deal out of it. Bring your food, eat it, still be the normal happy person, give your best ever in social situations, kind of pick and choose what you want to do there, and then, you know, move on with your life. It's going to be okay. Prep timing depends upon the person. Um, I like 16, 20, 24 weeks. Obviously, as a first-time competitor, I'd like a longer amount of time with them to see, again, how their body is responding because there are some weeks where we're not going to lose weight. Some weeks we're going to plateau. You know, it's not going to be linear. It's going to go like this. But as long as that trend line is going downwards over time and we're moving and you're looking better each and every week, then we're making progress. Again, this goes back to having a range of shows here. So contest prep, fantastic. After contest prep, before you go into the contest, make sure you're talking with your coach about what is the plan post-show. I find that, you know, a lot of people that get into bodybuilding are pretty type A, and that's great. You know, I, I jive with a lot of those people. We're type A OCD people. We want to plan, especially post-show. Um, and so I do talk with my clients before peak week, during peak week, after the show to make sure we, that they feel good with whatever post-show plan is. You know, is it a meal out? Is it a brunch the next day? And what are your Sunday numbers? You know, what are we going to be doing over the next week? Is it a diet break? Are we going to be doing another show in a week or two? You know, are we reversing after this? Is it going to be dependent upon your feedback and how you do? All those variables matter, but that helps you form a plan with your coach. I feel like that a lot of times people are just like, all right, cool, here's your show. You know, they have no plan whatsoever. Um, and that just sets them up for not so great of a reverse diet. That can be the post-show blow up, the post-show blues and things like that. Um, we can navigate those kinds of things by having a plan going into your reverse diet. I say the reverse diet's harder than prep because it is. In my opinion, it really, really is because no longer are we getting shredded. No longer are we seeing new lines every week. No longer is the scale going down. Honestly, the scale's got to go up. It has to go up. We cannot stay stage lean year round. We cannot. It's just not good for our overall metabolic capacity, not good for our energy levels. You're going to have some brain fog, digestion. Hormones are going to start to downregulate a little bit as well. We need to put the body back into a better position to build muscle mass, to incorporate the judge's feedback and come back better each and every time. So, That's why I say it's harder. It's harder, especially mentally than contest prep because contest prep, we're so much on the blinders. We're so much into ourselves and then reverse diet and they're like, okay, we're done. Like, okay, now what? That's where having a plan comes into play. Increasing calories, increasing metabolic capacity, increasing your energy and strength, increasing hormonal health. These are some good general goals for our reverse dieting phase. And that happens over time. You're not going to feel good you know, you're still not going to feel the best after like two weeks after your show, you're going to feel better, but you may not feel like quote unquote normal until about four weeks or so. Um, just because food takes a little bit of time to kick up with the mental side takes a time to kick up, kick up with and everything like that as well. It takes a little bit of time because hunger and satiety cues are majorly off after a contest prep because you may eat something in your reverse diet be like, Oh God, I'm so hungry after that. I just ate a big meal. It was full of a lot of, you know, good proteins, good fats, good carbs, and then I'm still hungry. But stick to your reverse. The consistency that you have in your reverse is absolutely key. Will there be some days where you're not as perfect? Yes. Tell your coach about that. Tell your coach about your struggles. I do like to talk with my clients again during the reverse diet to see how they're doing mentally and physically, making sure that we are on the right track. If there's any hiccups, how can we improve upon them? Because again, just like no contest prep is perfect, no reverse diet is perfect. There are going to be times where you go a little bit overboard, no guilt, no shame. Just look at your plan and see how you can improve it for next time. Decreasing food focus, decreasing cardio. These are things that should be also improving during the reverse diet. It takes some time to do this, so be patient with yourself. Give yourself some grace as well during the opening weeks post show, but stick with it. Don't just be like, okay, it's over. I'm just gonna go back to how I was eating before I even started my maintenance or building phase and don't hoard treats in your freezer. Just just don't do it. (laughs) Doesn't set up anybody for success because the discipline required to say no to that is pretty high in contest prep. It may go out the window during a reverse diet. So that's something that I don't really recommend. We can work in untracked meals. 
We can work in loosely tracked treats and things like that as well. There, the food is always, always going to be there. So don't rush and getting in everything socially and fun food wise post show. You will get there because your body is very susceptible to putting on body fat very quickly post show. So that's why we go slow. That's why we have some consistency there. So incorporate your same foods after your show for at least the first two to three weeks or so. Work in some treats on occasion. Make sure you're managing all those kinds of things. Communicate with your coach. Have a plan. And that'll set you up for some really good success post show. And the last point, weight gain. You need to gain weight. I, mean, I said it before, I'm gonna say it again. You cannot stay stage lean year round. You cannot have abs year round. Like I barely have them right now. Like it's, you know, it's okay. You know, because you wanna make the improvements, you wanna come back better, you've gotta gain some weight. And again, we do it slowly. It's not gonna be, oh, let's gain 10 pounds in a week. No, let's gain slowly. Let's get you back and feeling good. Let's get you back feeling better and everything like that. But I do, you know, I put this in a couple of videos ago about, you know, what is the average weight gain or anything like that? It can be a percentage. It could be anywhere between 10%, upwards of 20%. It depends upon your body, height, weight, how you did in your show, what improvements you have to make and things like that as well. But it's necessary. It's a reality. It's okay. You're gonna be fine. <laughs> I promise you, just keep going, continue to check in with your coach, continue to have that accountability there, be consistent, and you know, it's gonna be awesome. Then you get back up to the maintenance phase and building phase, then you really start having some fun. So this is a cyclical seasons. And again, this can apply to lifestyle clients as well. We still have to go through a maintenance phase. We still have to go through a building phase, especially if you are under muscled and are looking for that shape, that tone to your physique. Most likely that means not dieting, that means more muscle mass. We still have to go through a dieting phase with lifestyle clients. You still have to be adhering. You still have to navigate social situations. You still have to work on all these things. You don't have to pose, obviously, um, but you know it still applies to lifestyle clients. And of course, we still have to do what is a diet after the diet for lifestyle clients too. We still have to incorporate a reverse of some kind, get you back feeling better and things like that as well. So that was a lot. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment below any questions that you have. Comment below any future videos, topics you want to see me cover or anything else that I might have missed here. So I feel like I covered a lot, but obviously there are things that I could have missed as well. But give it a like, give it a subscribe. But I appreciate you guys kind of hanging in there with me through the entirety of this video. And I will catch you guys in the next one.